What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gaming Without Parole. Sitting across from me this week and every week, the one, the only, real simple this week, Desro. And sitting across from me is, of course, Brian Paul. Hey, this is Gaming Without Parole. I, I, you know, I have to have something better to say when you introduce me. I think this, no, that's, that's pretty good. That this works is out. Game without parole. This is Game Without Parole. We, we're, we are sentenced to game, game the rest of our lives without parole. It is a, it is a yeah. lifetime sentence. <laughs> Lifelong sentence. Life sentence. Life sentence. Bye. I've been listening for a copyright strike. Sorry. All right. I've been listening to a lot of dead Kennedys lately. <laughs> no complaints here. Yeah. All right. So you want an awesome Pandora station? Of course. Dead Milkman. Oh, great, great thing. That's your seed. Oh, just awesome stuff. Fantastic. <laughs> We're you, old. No, and so is everyone watching us. That's true. It works out pretty hey. well. So, Des, uh, what we've been doing here in Gaming Without Parole, just in case it's somebody's first time watching us, yeah. is uh, We're sorry. we've been going back and we've been trying to examine some of PlayStation VR's lesser covered titles. Yeah, yeah, the lesser known or the games that deserve, you know, a revisit maybe after a few months. Because, hey, we're PSVR players. We like the new shiny things. That's kind of why we're playing the PSVR. So Absolutely. We're kind of trying to buff up some of the uh, the dustier items in your collection. Yeah, I mean, don't get us wrong. Like, we've definitely taken some time. Like, when we were, we, we are still obsessed with Spark. So, like, Im- immediately, that game came out. We're like, we have to do an episode about Spark right away. Yeah. And, like, everything else got put on the back burner, and we covered Spark. So, we're not against doing that kind of thing. But at our core, um, we want to cover games that haven't gotten the attention they deserve. Yep. And today, I think, is a perfect example of said game. Yes. Uh, Loving the Young loves, in this case, uh, Carnival Games. Yeah. Carnival Games. Uh, so I don't know if, if anybody's new to the channel or has only been around for a little while. Um, y- you might know that I never reviewed Carnival Games, first and foremost. And second of all, and this is way better, mm-hmm. um, our buddy Dave Station VR. Hey. Uh, Dave Station uh, is a guy in Florida, and when I found him on YouTube, he had nine subscribers, mm-hmm. and I was like, and I just loved his voice. I liked his sense of humor, and I was yeah. like, and I contacted him. I was like, dude, I would love it if you did our Let's Plays, because we didn't do Let's Plays on the channel. Right. And so I said, Dave, would you do some Let's Plays for us? And he goes, yeah, I'm just going to be drunk the whole time. I was like, that's fine. Uh, so <laughs> That's on message. I want to say our first Let's Play ever, I could be wrong about this, was carnival games and it was by dave station vr all right if you don't subscribe to dave station do it do it he's a great guy also like our videos because have you noticed we don't get enough likes on this i don't get enough likes in general you get a lot of likes that's why i'm an entertainer ta-da mm. i got nothing <laughs> all right dude carnival games i'm just gonna i'm just gonna jump to the end of the review okay it's surprisingly good Surprisingly good, yeah. I, the the actual games themselves are great. Everything kind of hanging around the games <laughs> is questionable at best, but the actual gameplay itself is really good, and especially for a game that was you know first off the gate, pretty much was it a launch? Uh, pretty close to launch title. Pretty close to a launch yeah. title. I don't think it was day one, but it was right around that. I could be wrong, but I think it was the same month. Yeah, yeah. It was it was definitely very early on, and you know they've nailed a few of things that games have come out very recently are having a hard time with. Yeah, yeah. They they also didn't nail things that games a long time ago totally had covered. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. But so you mentioned you mentioned it's the stuff around the games. Yes. That maybe isn't the shining spot in this title. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get off that right off the bat. Um, Please. Throughout all the games, you have your you know the the carnival barker sort of guy who's kind of you know giving you uh, instructions. Actually, no, he doesn't give you instructions. No, actually, no. the tutorials are just you know plastered instructions in front of you he's basically just commenting on your gameplay Mm -hmm. but the problem with that is he only has about 10 phrases that he says well depending he has a couple different phrases for each game it's about 10 no, okay. Well, th- I was gonna say there's yeah. uh, there's what twelve games total. Yeah. So there's I would say he's got about two, in two unique phrases for each game. Okay. And then he's got like a bunch of lines that he just says constantly. Yeah, and the thing is too, like the timing of you know it's supposed to be like you do something cool. He says, "Hey, way to go!" You right. mess up, and like, "Oh, that was embarrassing." I mean, those aren't exact quotes, but it's pretty close. But I've got some exact quotes. Oh, you do? Good. Oh, my yes. goodness. Yeah. Um. One that he just says incessantly, Mm -hmm. which is, oh, God. Watching you play is my favorite part of my day. Yeah. I'm like, okay, did you have, I get get it, you were trying to rhyme. Or trying to hit on me. Maybe, watching you play. Uh, And then during the. uh, Bend over to play skee-ball. During the funnel cake 
yeah, yeah. Catching the funnel cake one. He 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 says constantly, "Pour some sugar on you," and also, "That's putting the fun in, in funnel." Yeah, yeah. yeah he, it, he does it a lot. And even at that, I mean, so so corny jokes for a carnival game. That's fine. That's mm-hmm. I'm totally okay with that. The problem is they're so repetitive and so ill timed <laughs> that he's he'll be in the middle saying like one thing, you know, because you did something good, but then like right in the middle of that. The audio will cut itself off as if he was in the middle of a sentence and getting cut off by himself to say something else. Yeah, the the, the great thing, and I got we got to give uh, some credit to Cat Daddy Games, the developer, mm-hmm. uh, because th- they've made like a million versions of Carnival games. Yeah, they they put it out on the Wii, the DS, the 3DS. Uh, they, I think they made one for the the 360 Connect. Yes, there was one for the Kinect as well. It's everywhere. And so, I mean, eventually they must have learned some things along the way. And uh, as you said, the Carnival Barker, there's actually options to turn his voice all the way down. That's what I was going to say. Or turn it almost all the way down so that you can enjoy it at a quiet volume. Yes, or not be bothered at all. Exactly. Uh, it's it's very it's it's reassuring because because uh, I was just playing End Space. End Space mm-hmm. is a is a brand new just came out like a few days ago. Um, uh, PlayStation VR space shooter. Okay. And there are no volume controls at all. Yeah. And and the guy who's giving you all of your mission objectives, mm-hmm. he talks just as much as this carnival barker. And oh. um, and and I'm just like, can I just turn him off? And I went to turn him down at least, or mm-hmm. turn nothing. Nothing. Oh. No options for any of that. And I was like, I guess this guy's going to be in my ears for the rest okay. of my day. Yeah, you do have individual volume sliders for yeah, uh, his voice, actual game sounds, and music separate. So Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, kudos. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so, I mean, the first version of this did come out. It was uh, 2007. It was a Wii game, mm-hmm. which makes sense. Uh, and actually, this caught me by surprise. Well, <laughs> what, what, what do you got? Oh, I don't know if you're about to say it, so go ahead. I don't know. Uh, so it was actually uh, the third best-selling uh, third-party game for the Wii. Yep. And the twentieth overall, seven million copies sold. That's crazy. Seven yeah. million. You know, and and you see, I mean, you look at the cover, and this looks like a Wii Shovelware. character. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Um, and and you know, it, it came out at a time when there was just big old piles of shovelware for the Wii. Yeah. And you know, I can't speak to the Wii version of this, but this is this is not shovelware. Nope. No. Um. It, Graphically, it may, especially the other, uh, I, I guess I'll be generous and call them NPCs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's other, you know, people walking around the carnival sort of in this weird, glassy eyed grin days. Oh, yeah. Um, They're all sorts of messed up. Yeah, they, they look kind of weird and badly made, but they're really not important. You don't interact with them, they're not part of the game, so you can just. And if they totally weren't there, the carnival would look totally empty. So it's a, just, they're just. Yeah, things to fill space really. Yeah, it's weird kind of point out like how bad they look because they have nothing to do with your enjoyment of the game. Yeah. Although um, it is kind of funny, like they they do stand next to you. Like if you're playing skee ball or something, they stand next to you also playing skee ball mm-hmm. very poorly. I don't know if you've noticed. Yeah, yeah. You look over and they're just like dropping balls, <laughs> doing nothing. Right. Um, but so so again, it, it makes the place feel a little bit more alive, mm-hmm. especially when they're standing right next to you. And sometimes they scare me because I forget that somebody's yeah. standing next to me. I guess we should talk about what exactly this game is, really. Um, I mean, we've kind of like talked about the game. We've talked but not around about it. It's yeah. playing in the background. People know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, so it's basically <laughs> all those crappy games in the midway that you get ripped off while you play. Well, mm-hmm. now you get to play them in the comfort of your own home without losing any money. Well, except so, for the, the money you spent to buy the well, game. Yeah, that's true. Uh, significantly less of a ripoff than going to an actual carnival, though. Yeah, absolutely. Although you don't get the big three-foot-tall teddy bear if you succeed. So No. Yeah. Small teddy bears. Small teddy bears. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Carnival Games uh, requires two Move controllers to play. Mm-hmm. Guys, buy Move controllers. Why do we, we keep telling you this? Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely essential. And uh, and you know, each Move controller functions as a separate hand. A lot of the games mm-hmm. allow you to use two hands. Yes. Very seldom did I find myself using my left hand. I get it. If you're left-handed, you're going to need that. Mm-hmm. But like, I feel like I could probably get through this whole, whole game using one. Almost the whole game using one move controller. So there's a few. I mean, I can I can appreciate that. Yeah, you're gonna use your dominant I mean, ski ball. You're gonna use your dominant hand. Yep. Whatever. But there's games like the um the basketball. Uh, alley, no, not alley ball. What do they call it? Uh, swish. Swish. Um, you know, that's one of those. Basically, get as many baskets as you can in a certain yeah. amount of time. 
And the key, if you don't know behind those games, is use, using both hands. Bop, 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 bop. Just keep going. Don't care about accuracy, just get balls in the air. I guess the climbing wall would be difficult with one arm as well. Yeah, so actually that brings me to, so why don't we, instead of you know going through every game, how about, what's your, what's your favorite? That's really tough. Yeah, I, I have I, I have two for sure favorites. Okay. Uh, the first, so the, the midway is divided up into four four sections. Yeah, you, you've got Gizmo Grove, Cowboy Corral, Wizards Walkway, and Sports Station. Yeah, I don't feel like these are aptly named. I, I <laughs> because Wizards Wizards Walkway yeah has has pop darts like just like throwing darts, mm-hmm. a climbing wall which I'm like okay You're climbing up the side of a castle I sure. think yeah uh, and, and ring toss. I'm like, yep. so you're theming sections of the midway, but you're ignoring the theme when it comes to the games you're putting in it. Yeah, it, it seems a little strange, but um, yeah, it's my two favorites. First, in Gizmo Grove, okay, there's a haunted house, and I was like, sweet, I love haunted houses. It's like almost October, so right. excited <laughs> about this. And so, uh, in, in what it is, of course, is Until Dawn: Rush of Blood. Pretty much the yeah. tutorial level. Yeah, yeah, things pop up, and they've got like little targets on them, and mm-hmm. you, you've got two guns and. Love, love holding move controllers that are guns in VR. Yeah, especially when they're big cartoon guns. It very much like I had a feel. You know, I kind of had a spiel about. Yeah. All right. Our viewers are used to the cops. Kind <laughs> of had a thing about you know Disney and my last litter box, but it's very much like Buzz Lightyear, but happening in the haunted mansion. In fact, there are little nods here and there exactly to the haunted mansion. Oh, really? I would say, yeah. It's been a while. Um, I, I don't know. I mean. Well, it, you know, it had to be. Um, but, yeah, basically you're just in your little cart and you're going around, you know, uh, just like any kind of dark ride at Disney. But now you have guns mm. and you can blow up, you know, ghosts and goblins and spiders and, yeah. I got to say, I've played it a handful of times. Mm-hmm. And there were moments where I thought I got through the entire, almost perfectly, like the entire ride or whatever. Yeah. And I thought I shot, not every target, but almost. Mm-hmm. I get off the ride, I get one star... And then, it, and I see that other people have double the points that I do. Yeah, I'm like what's going on here? I think there's also an accuracy, like the amount of wasted shots you have. Uh, so if you just there and spray bullets everywhere, which is of course not, what I did. Yeah, you're not going to get as high of a score as people who are just like bang, bang, bang. I'm like unlimited know. ammo. Of course, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I, and that that actually brings kind of a point to some of these games. The well, the difficulty level on the games is not consistent. <laughs> I mean, some of the games like like that, you feel like, wow, I did a great job, yep. and you get like five tickets. Like, what? But then some where, you know, uh, uh, the ring toss is one. My other of. favorite game. How yeah. did you know? The, it's, it's great, but it's just like, why did I get like 300 tickets for what I just did there? Wasn't that great? Yeah. So uh, if scoring the tickets actually matters to you, which you shouldn't, um, that's a little inconsistent. But, the, the consistency of it shouldn't matter. Yeah. Um, but getting tickets is important because you have to get use those tickets that you win from the games to unlock other games. So strange. Yeah. Today I started up the game mm-hmm. and I was like, this is going to be easy. I'm like, I, I've already played this game to death. No big deal. I, I very quickly realized I hadn't played this game very much. Oh. There were still entire sections that were like, oh, really? that were still locked. Okay. Because when when I first got the game, I, Michelle was all about it, mm-hmm. and so I was like, "You just you play this and, and unlock everything," and she yeah. didn't. Also strange, FYI. Yeah. Uh, there there was one game, Golden Arm. Yeah. Right. So all it is is like stacked up milk jugs mm-hmm. or milk bottles. Milk bottles. Yeah. And your objective is to knock down the golden ones. There's white ones all mm-hmm. around and stuff. It's like Angry Birds, except you're throwing right. a ball instead of a bird. You get the idea. Right. The leaderboard in the back. Top three of all time. Mm. It's number two, the second Kira, ninety, aka Woo! Michelle. <laughs> and I and, and when I'm so I'm getting footage for this right for this episode. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, oh, I, I got to be able to beat her. I must have played fifty times and I was like, I can't beat Michelle. <laughs> so uh, congrats, Michelle. You're you're holding the second place uh, title very very well. That's awesome. I didn't even crack top three. Uh, um, so actually, I, that's you know I I should have brought. So in my my magic and other stuff collection, one of my prized uh, collections was I used to live in Old Orchard Beach and uh, near it. And a friend of mine, his grandfather was a carny, and I actually had three of the original actual milk bottle uh, milk bottles from a milk bottle toss. And then one of the secrets, because um, a lot of these games, especially back then, were wicked wicked rigged. Right. There are three. They're aluminum bottles. One of them 
the bottom half of it is full of lead. Of course. Yeah. So you can hit the other two just fine. They're going to go flying, but that thing is going to stay there. Um, and, of course, the the carny, the person running it, they know they can knock it down every time they want because they know which one's the lead, and they just have to aim for the lead one. So, l- little tip there. Don't play these games. <laughs> play them virtually and have a blast. Uh, so, yeah. So, my favorite, the climbing wall. It is absolutely, <laughs> you know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do something you hate. Yeah. It's it's the most unique of all of these games. Yeah, it, this really it should be a game. Like this should be a gameplay mechanic yeah. for an entire game in and of itself. Um, the, the basic idea is you're moving, and it's kind of neat. You know, I've got my motion sickness issues, so this could be a weird one. But actually, the way it works is your camera, your view stays still, and your arms are actually yeah. climbing. So when you pull you're not moving it's kind of like from your perspective you're pulling the castle down and um, then there's you know different obstacles some of the handles will actually like open and close yep. periodically so you have to time it just right to grab those um yeah it's it's real fun i mean you get you know it's uh, you see some reviews with like oh i got a huge workout from it I'm like no that's well, i will say yeah. I, I did it three times today no okay. four times today uh and just after four times which mm-hmm. it only takes about well, I think 75 seconds was my r- rough a- average. Okay. I did it four times. Yeah. So about five minutes total. I, I, my arms were sore when I was done. Yeah. Because I mean, cause when else in your life are you doing this, like, nonstop for, like, a minute and a half? <laughs> like, you know? And, and, and then do it four times in a row. Yeah. It's, but in, in there, and it's not just... It's not just a climbing wall. Like climbing mm-hmm. wall is a part of it, but like there are there are horizontal oh, ropes. Right, the rope you can you pull know, yourself so across. Exactly, and then okay, you're pulling good. yourself up a chain. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. you said all the handles on the climbing wall and stuff. It's it's it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a gameplay mechanic where I could see it turning into like a puzzler platformer kind of thing for you know uh, for the VR. So I yeah, I'd like to see that expanded. And that's actually my complete like the games like the haunted house, yeah. the games like the climbing wall. Those are really really fun and really really short and there's no other levels to them. It doesn't change at all. There's no like, oh you did great, you know. You can probably from sitting down and firing up, you can probably unlock all the games an hour. Probably an maybe. hour, yeah. Yeah. What I'd love to see is either maybe a DLC or maybe just like, okay, you've unlocked all the games, now you can unlock the second level. Yeah. You know, or, or further gameplay or some kind of other change. Um, yeah, I, I definitely feel the same way. Um, that, that's something like when you play the game uh, uh, Shark Tank, which yeah. is just like a dunk tank, right? And with, with the bullseye, yeah. all you have to do is take the ball and, and throw it at, at the bullseye. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what's great about that is it starts off with a normal bullseye, then it gets smaller and smaller, and then it starts with a moving bullseye, and that gets smaller. And right. Like, okay, well, I get this. This is this is level progression. Yeah. Right. And 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 so there are so many different games in this collection that could have benefited from that style of progression, mm-hmm. um, especially uh, especially Ring Toss because I thought that was fantastic. I thought it was really yeah. well done. Yeah. Every single time I finish a. a, a a playthrough, whatever you want to call it, a mm-hmm. game. I, uh, it just, I immediately, I don't even look at my score. I'm like, play, again. restart, just yep. click it again, click it yep. again. And uh, same thing with the uh, the golden arm because that was, yeah, yeah. Those two especially, I really like the the reload and and the timing is so fast that there's there's no cost to hitting. Yep, go again. You know, it's not like you have to go again and wait for it to reload. Go, boom, starts off right away. Uh, so it, especially if you're trying to chase, you know, forget the tickets, but just beating your own score. It's really, it's a little addicting to yeah. just go, yep, again, again, again. And especially when you see Michelle's name up there on the leaderboard and you just <laughs> want to so knock her awful. out. <laughs> so ridiculous. Uh, so just for completeness sake, my other favorite. Yeah, please. Which is, I just love it. I mean, maybe the gameplay isn't the most fun. I just love the sur- surreality of it because like most of these games are based off of actual games you'd find at the Midway. Yeah. I only wish there was a world that existed where Funnel Cake Stacker was a real game. Funnel Cake Stacker. Uh, <laughs> so you talked about the inconsistency with these games. Some yeah. of them you get a ton of tickets. And fun, I I get three stars on Funnel Stacker every single time. Yeah. And if you don't know what this is, what it is you you start off and you you know what? Before we even explain this, yeah. there's something I want to say. Okay. You say we've talked about how it got all the games right, and it's everything in between that doesn't get right. Mm-hmm. Starting the games in like the sim- simple things, like picking up the two plates you need to do to to start funnel cake stacker. Yeah, they don't 
you think your natural reaction would be like, you have two hands, mm-hmm. you gr- you reach out, you grab the plates. Yeah. That doesn't work. You, you just click the triggers and the plates appear in your hands. Oh, right. So right. if you, in the same, very often goes, it's, and it's not for every game, mm-hmm. but very often you'll reach down, you'll grab a ball and you pick up nothing, even though you're right there, boom. Yep. But if you're like this far away and you just click the trigger, boom, it'll, it'll suction to your hand. And it's hard yeah. to remember that the game is trying to make things so easy for you that it makes it difficult sometimes. Yeah, that actually happened to me on the haunted haunted house. Getting the guns out of the yeah. the holsters. Yeah. Oh yeah. The first time I tried to play, <laughs> I was like, like "Why can't I start? What's yeah. what's glitched here?" And then you just sit back and you go, Pfft. "Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> damn." Yeah. yeah. So so we appreciate the the help, but at the same time, it should have made it just as easy to pick them up. I don't. Yeah. Know. I think that. Oh. Yeah. No, please. <laughs> I think that brings me kind of to the larger point I wanted to talk about with this game. Um, as much as I enjoy this game, I have a real problem with it in that who is this for? I mean, let's let's kind of address the element in the room. The PlayStation VR, it's really for us, like, gamer gamers. Yeah. The hardcore of the hardcore. A casual gamer, you know, some of the people who bought the Wii are not the people who are buying the PSVR. This is your family time, you know, hey, Grandma, let's play a game together game. Except that you can't play it together. Exactly my point. Yeah. Yeah, so you can't play this together. Um, this is a great family game, but you know what? If you're following the rules, you know, you, you know, people under 12 can't play this game. Yeah. So it's, like, really well done, but who's the market? I, I have no idea. Yeah. I, I think... I think what Carnival Games has been successful at doing, like for the whole franchise, mm-hmm. is saying, hey, here's your new system and here's a brand new game for it. And they just, boom, here you go. Right. And they get it out real fast. Yep. That's like what they're really good at. And and I think that this game probably succeeded pretty well on PlayStation VR because it was very fast out of the gate. Yeah. Uh, so who is it made for? It's made for people who buy tech on day one and want something to play. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and I got to say... I, I've enjoyed my time with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, real quick, we need to talk about Funnel Cake Stacker before oh, we get sorry, too yeah, far. Yeah. <laughs> Once you pick up those plates, they start firing funnel cakes at you, right, from three different, like, cannons I across. Love this. And they just, and you, they start watching, and, you, and you're like a clown. We're trying to catch yep. them, right? And and you get points for every time one lands on your plate, you get more points depending on how many are actually on the plate. Right. Now, once they land on the plate, they don't just stick there. They have yeah, physics get, of their own. They're still balance, wobbling. Yeah. And so eventually what I always end up doing is I end up creating a huge pile that goes across two plates. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's, it's just ridiculous. And you actually, for a moment, you forget you're holding two move controllers and you're balancing plates full of funnel yep. cakes. It's so stupid. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. Oh, yeah. It's it's absolutely ridiculous and laughable. And then, like, at the end where it starts, like, rapid-firing them, it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm just screwed now. Yeah. yeah. But when you get them all, it's like, in the points, yeah. you just see, do 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 racking up. It's yeah. awesome. And I got to say, you know, carnivals, fairs, amusement parks, funnel cake slash fried dough, one of my favorite things. Oh, so, my God. I, I, I could I'm so hungry. The idea of a machine that can fire those at me from like 200 feet away just makes me very, very happy. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, and I think, and I think, like we've said, I think since this isn't an actual place, mm-hmm. why weren't there more games like that? Why weren't there more games that allowed yeah, fantasy to take over our games? That's interesting. Yeah, the only ones that are really a stretch are, are the climbing wall one yeah. and then the funnel cake. I mean, everything else is pretty much a shot for shot. You know, like the dart game and the shark tank, they are based on real um, uh, games, but they're slightly different. They're yeah. they're doing things that you wouldn't really be able to do at a, at a carnival, but it's still the same kind of mechanic. But you yeah. know what? It's it's You get 12 different carnival games. Mm-hmm. You get... Uh, there's, those tickets don't just unlock um, the different games. Oh, yeah. They, there's also a whole wall of prizes you can get, uh, and then you can bring all those prizes to a... They call it a playroom. Yeah. It's the lamest playroom ever. I would say, yeah, you, you can throw things around, you can bounce them off trampolines. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a trophy room, which I assume just correlate to the actual trophies in the game, and i got to say, I've only unlocked one. <laughs> I've spent hours with this game now, and I've only unlocked one trophy. But you can look at all of the trophies in the trophy room, and you can see what you have to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very interesting. It's a very eclectic group of trophies. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think they might actually be fun to unlock. And I think it's that probably brings us to our decision time. Yeah. Um, 
this game came out for nineteen ninety nine when it when it launched. Okay, it's been on sale multiple times since. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was I think I paid ten bucks for mine. I think you paid ten bucks for yours. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. So for twenty bucks for for the suggested MSRP, mm-hmm. what do we think? For twenty, yeah, you know, I think this would be a great game. Like if there were more of a multiplayer, I, I don't know what that's going to look like. That's not my not my uh, thing to do, you know. If there was more multiplayer, or if the PSVR was a little more family friendly, mm-hmm. I would have no problem. Yeah, this is a buy straight up. Get this, and even at that, I'd say like if you're the type of person who has a lot of people over to try it, yeah. to try the PSVR, maybe this is one to keep up there. You know, Job Simulator, Simulator, I think should be like game one. You have people try this. This could be up there too. Um, so I'm gonna. Definitely buy it on sale. If you're that special person I was talking about, buy it full price. Yeah, because yeah, using using I think I think at this point it's safe to assume we're just going to go straight back to our old rating system. Uh, every it works. Everybody in the comments said it doesn't matter if other people use it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a common sense kind of scale. Uh, so yeah, when I got when I picked this up, I absolutely assumed it was going to be one of those. Don't let anyone buy this. This is going to be bad. You're going to write a bad review. It's going to be horrible. Yeah. and I had more fun in Carnival Games VR than I've had in a lot of other VR experiences. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, get over yourself and just have fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for $10, it's an absolute should we. It's, it's, yeah. it's 100% uh, something I recommend. But for 20 I can totally see that's a little too much to ask. Mm-hmm. Um, but for 10 bucks, you're going to get a lot of gameplay out of this, and it's just stupid fun. Yeah. I don't know. Those move controllers work really well. I, I can't complain. Yeah, for me, I, I'd say at 20 like... If you buy it at twenty, I'm, you're not going to feel ripped off. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, believe we spent as as PSVR, <laughs> we spent a lot more to get a lot less games. So this is absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, for on sale, I think both of us agree. Definitely on sale. Yeah. Yep. And it's on sale so frequently that just wait, and <laughs> it probably will be soon. Ten bucks, right. great game. Uh, we definitely want to uh, promote uh, what's coming up on the channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, we love October. We're huge fans yeah. of Halloween and October in general. Spooky. So happy I can drink hot coffee again instead of having to like you know douse it with ice as I've been doing for the last year. It seems amateur. I drink hot coffee year round. But I know a secret. This is room temperature coffee. Yeah, I know. it's been there all day. <laughs> wait, wait, what's the secret? That is room temperature coffee. That is a secret, yeah. for sure. Uh, so, yeah, so what we're going to do on the channel is we're going to try to push scary games as much as possible because October is my favorite month of the year and what I say goes around here, apparently. Right. So, yeah, we can't we can't still Shocktober because that's, you know, the, the Flophouse has that no. kind of nailed, but... Um, Without yeah. Pearltober. Without well, Pearltober, yeah, it's not going to work. No? But, no. I rolled right off my tongue. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so for the next month, our goal on Gaming Without Parole is to not get arrested. These cops are everywhere. But <laughs> also, we try to scare the crap out of Dez. Mm. Because as we know, Dez doesn't get scared in games not very well. Not very frequently. Not no. very frequently. No. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's, again, and it's not like, I don't want to say it's like this, oh, I'm so manly, these games don't scare me. It's just, I think there's something wrong with me. Yeah. yeah. We're going to make it even worse. <laughs> uh, so we're going to throw scary games at them all Woo-hoo! month long, and then we're going to sit here and we're going to talk yeah. about them. And uh, we we mentioned that possibly. 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 And, and uh, please don't hold us to this. Yeah. Uh, this all might culminate in Resident Evil 7 VR. Yeah, so what I will I will promise you, the the viewers, that I will try it again, yeah. um, in order to to get it out here for October. Uh, if I can't play it still, then I'm going to say I'm very very sorry. It's not a fear. Next thing. October, just, yeah, something to I, look I'm, forward I'm to next that. year. Yeah, things have changed. I can play games I had a hard time with before, so I will honest do my honest best to do this um but i i am not of the school that says just power your way through it i don't believe that's a good way to live your life it makes it's made a lot of people sick um yeah when they, when they try to, sh- to power through motion sickness and yeah. and most of what we've been doing here uh you and me mm. is is sort of you know taking a taking a trip together taking a little voyage and yeah. and, and working you through your motion sickness slowly mm-hmm. right and so uh and and, and i think we're, we're taking a very subdued approach saying hey this is a guy who gets motion sick pretty easy in vr yeah. let's 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 play things from a stationary position and then eventually let's get him there right. and we're gonna see if possible 
if it ever happens. And the thing I, I will say in this the short time we've been doing this, there have been enough really good gaming experiences even without doing the ones that would make me sick. Right. Like, even if those games didn't exist, I would still be a pan, fan of PSVR. You know, so I don't feel like I'm having a lesser experience because I'm not, I can't play rigs, for instance. And I cannot play rigs. <laughs> uh, but, so, oh, and uh, another thing, I don't know if we talked about on the other ones, but let's say I'm one of the, the fans out there and I said, you know what, there's this really cool crocheted scarf I wanted to send. So, so here's the deal. Uh, everybody's been talking about like, oh, we, we want to send you stuff, whether it be games or or uh, or fan art or whatever yeah. it is. I, I made you something, and we want to send it to you guys. Well, and, and first of all, that's like <laughs> mind blowing that people actually would want to do that. So like ridiculous, guys. Ridiculous. That's crazy. Um, we, we, we feel so privileged to have such awesome, awesome uh, yeah. viewers, such awesome game cats. Um, so thank you very much. And so, so today, earlier today, I went out and, uh, I, cause, cause in case you don't know, we do all this out of my apartment and it yeah. looks nothing like this. I promise you, um, that this is well, beautiful. Um, oh, well that's from, yeah, I carry that with me everywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I do this in my tiny little Worcester, Massachusetts apartment. Mm -hmm. It's about 498 square feet, and this takes up about half of it. Um, it is not an exaggeration, any of that. So the last thing I want to do when people are like, we need to, we want to send you things, is give you my home address. It's the right. only place we were kind of based out of. Yeah. Uh, so I went out and got a P.O. box today. And so if you want to send us anything at all, uh, you can send it to Without Parole Games, P.O. Box 133, uh, Worcester, Mass, 01613. That's a huge milestone in, in the Without Parole Games history. Yeah. A it, P.O. Box. A P.O. Box. Ooh. It's crazy. It's almost like a real business. It, it, it's feeling scarily, eerily close to one yeah. every day that goes by. So, again, we really appreciate all of you, even, you know, just just the fact that you're tuning every week, the fact that you're giving us those likes and the subscriptions and the comments, yeah. um, and the, the fact that, that even, like, one person out there actually wanted to send us a uh, a thing and, and it's just, is already yeah. made way more than that yeah thank you dr doom thank you ships geek out oh yeah you guys are dr. all doom. Yeah. amazing dr doom i told him i gave him the address he already sent something today <laughs> i was like geez I, now i gotta go figure out how to check my mailbox i went and looked yeah. at it today at the post office i was like you're my little new mailbox Aww. yeah all right all right we, we're talking way too long yes for gaming without parole i'm brian i'm des and we'll see you next week with scary mm -hmm. stuff